Here's a quick video on uh, a job I'm doing, making a motor mount for a one horsepower motor. Uh, the motor will mount on the face of this when I'm done with its bolt pattern uh, milled out. So um, what I have here with this PM 1440E lathe, uh, it's a pretty decent lathe. I got it from Online Quality Tools. I believe it's Matt, the owner, or a sub owner, one way or the other. Um, it's, it's pretty decent. I've ran into a couple issues here and there running with it, but I am running it pretty hard and pretty heavy. As you can see in my chip bin, I have some you know heavy chips. Uh, at least I, I take at least 100 thou, 100 thou cuts, so that would be uh, 200 thou total on the DRO if it's a 2 to 1 ratio. Um, I like to hog things down pretty quick, pretty fast. I don't like to dilly dally with my machining. So, but anyhow, what I did is I took, got a bison buck chuck on here. Uh, 8 inch, it came with a 6 inch 3 jaw scroll chuck, which is over here, and an 8 inch 4 jaw. Take the rag off of there, They're hanging there. Um, back plate, carry rest, or uh, carry rest, steady rest, all that kind of good stuff. Anyhow, uh, I went ahead and bought a set of uh, pie jaws for this guy, and if you guys are not familiar with pie jaws, they are the only way to go. Um, obviously I run my hard jaws too, my master set um, occasionally, but a pie jaw is the only way to go. Here I'll kind of show you what I got going on. I went ahead and panned this guy out with a homemade padding tool and this used to fit in here like so. And when you're done panning it out, you're left with your dropout slug. And then you're left with a an ID that you'll clean up later and I got these tools from Shars. Um, highly impressed with these tools I got from Shars and I'll talk about that later in a, a different video. Um, but I'll kind of blend this video together if I can figure out how to do it and then I'll show you the step by step and in, in the end result of what I'm making here. But uh, it all has to do with these pie jaws and these pie jaws, if you guys can get a set of these pie jaws, run them, use them, learn how to use them. They are sweet. Uh, these ones here are the American Standard Tongue and, tongue and Groove, um, and they are set up. Let me get this guy into neutral. Well, easier your turn. Um, of course, everything matches up. Three, three, all that kind of good stuff. You'll have to label them. One, two, three. And then you can basically cut your own pockets out of these. You can do this with the... the uh, soft jaws, the, the metal soft jaws, I prefer the aluminum because they're stickier. They tend to grab the material a little better uh, for this application and you can also grab almost 365 degrees around all your parts. Now I, I, I cut 8 inch tubing, uh, all kinds of stuff. I have a live center that goes on here with a uh, three jaw chuck on it and I've custom made some pie jaws to go on the ID of, of different size tubing so I can cut basically all the way across here and, and make tubing, um, machine the tubing in any dimensions I want. Basically put threads on it or uh, uh, part it off the length or you know cut profiles in it, whatever I want to do. Um, but that's, the pie jaw is the heart and soul of any lathe no matter what you're doing. I swear by them. So there you go. If you guys aren't familiar with them, get them. Um, and the, the, the PM 1440s are a decent small little shop or hobby lathe. Uh, I'm, I'm consistently, never mind my tools up here, um, that one's the most important for me, at least this time of the day. Um, but the DRO is a lifesaver. If you guys can get that, get it. Uh, it saves me hours and hours of double checking, triple checking, but I can consistently on this lathe uh, hold a, a parallel within five ten thousandths over a 10 or 15 inch um, length of the two ends on, on tubing uh, five ten thousandths of that length is is pretty extraordinary and also the flatness of a material I can consistently hold um, you know at least a thou over a 10 inch piece of material and that's that's pretty decent for a little mach machine like this. Now I'm sure I can be a little more finite if I wanted to and keep it down to five ten thousandths. Not necessary for anything I'm doing, but me, 
being a machinist, I'm pretty, I don't know, how could you say it, asinine when it comes to my measurements. Even if I got a tolerance of plus or minus 10 thousandths, every measurement to me is a tolerance of plus or minus two. And you just get in the habit of holding a tight tolerance and then it, everything becomes easy after that. And, you know, and if you get a plus or minus five ten thousandths tolerance, then it's not that far of a challenge to hold and repeat. And with this lathe, with this setup, I'm able to do that pretty consistently. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and get this video, I'll finish out this part, and I'll show you what I'm doing, but I just want to introduce not only the lathe, but also the Pie Jaws uh, Quick Change Tool Post, uh, absolute must. Uh, there are some pros and cons to this lathe, but for the most part, it's, it's serving the purpose for what I'm doing. Um, you can see I have my chip bin filled up with some pretty heavy chips like I was talking about. Now this is just aluminum but at the same time I, I you try to hog things out as much as you can and uh, I wasn't too familiar with the Shars insert indexable tooling. Um, real skeptical for the price. I'm used to Kenna Metal uh, is my kind of lean to and always go to but I will give an update on these toolings. Um, I got quite a few of them here. I purchased about six hundred dollars worth of this tooling for a trial purpose. Um, that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with them. That would have been probably $3,000 worth of Kenna Metal tools. So, not knocking Kenna Metal. Um, I'm just, just saying that these are a decent tool for the price.